Hello and welcome to the show. This is Andy's Shed Live for Sunday the 19th of July 2020 and this is Series 7, Episode number 25. Hello and good evening everybody. How are you? I hope you are all well this evening. Um, five people already um, watching this and uh, and in the chat and that uh, and uh, hi to Christopher two thousand all the way out there in Australia, who's uh, who's with us every week at stupid o'clock in the morning for him. Um, so uh, yeah, good good morning, uh, Chris, and uh, hope you're uh, hope you're well out there. In fact, I'm glad you're here because there's going to be something you're going to quite like. Um, in this uh, in this show a little bit later this evening I'm just tidying up here at the moment I've been doing more of the 3d printing this week I've done quite a lot of them now um, you remember, may remember I was printing little narrow gauge railway carriages the other day well um, I've done quite a few now so <laughs> there they are There's a, a, a whole bunch of them you say and I've had to alter the chassis on them so that the wheels would actually fit in them. So I've done various types. This is a, this is a new open one that's got got a separate roof. It's going to have like roof sticks, so it's like open. It's going to be like that. So so there's all all sorts of different ones, and we've got little uh, little Hudson tubs as well, like uh, like that. Um, so yeah, we've printed all kinds of things. But um, we're going to put those to one side, if I can find a one side to put them uh, at the moment. Where can I stick them? Um, stick them over on there for now. Um, but uh, while I am uh, moving all these out of the way, um, just time to do a bit of housekeeping and tell you that if you want to get in touch with us here at the show, you can do. Um, get in touch with us by going here. It's uh, andyshed.callpress.net. That will take you to our website. And uh, once you get to the website there, um, you'll find a contact us form. Fill that form in and then that actually sends me an email. That's how it does it. Um, and you'll be able to get in touch with me like that. Or, of course, if you're on YouTube or if you're on library or whatever. And library has been having some problems this week. If you've not been able to log into library this week... You're not on your own, because <laughs> um, neither have I for a lot of the time. Um, so, um, yeah, so if you're on YouTube or, on, or you're on library and you don't want to go and do the uh, the old website thing, then, of course, you can contact me um, just by leaving a comment somewhere below or wherever it happens to be these days. Um, right, I'm just moving things out of the way. Um, Making a bit of space on the desk. I just wanted to leave them there to uh, to show you how many I've done now. Open one there, semi-open one. Um, yeah, I will actually get around to painting them one day and that, you know, and finish them off. Um, but yeah, so we've printed a load of those now, and the little Hudson tippy tubs as well. Can you see? I don't. Know. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. I do know a guy that used to work at Hudson's, uh, designing stuff at Hudson's, and that he designed a lot of the navigation stuff that went in the Channel Tunnel when they were building the Channel Tunnel. And I ought to show you those. <laughs> those little Hudson tubs. Um, right, let's get that lot out of the way. Like that. Right, we'll clear the decks. Right, who's with us tonight? Um, Jimmy Myers is with us. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, Dominic Meakin is with us as well. Hi there, Dominic. Um, right, as well as Christopher, of course, who tells me it's 3.46, he says, in, uh, in uh, Australia, in the morning. That's dedication for you. Right. <laughs> I've got good news for you, Christopher. We're going to be on a little bit earlier next week, so you'll be able to go, go to bed a bit earlier, mate. Um, yeah, right. Now, as I said, I'm glad he's here because I was talking about 
uh, Ericsson phones last week, if you remember, and we were trying to work out what this Ericsson phone thing was that Christopher said he had, and we thought it was a thing similar to a 706, and then he said, no, nah, it's a Bakelite phone. Um, well, I have some of them here. Um, uh, but just before we get on to that, Dominic says, an update on the trim phones. The dial is much better now that I've tightened the plastic screw up a tad tighter. And Arthur G's arrived as well. Hello there, Arthur. Yeah, Dominic, as, like I say, those those trim phone dials, they just sit in that plastic cradle thing with those four feet on it. And they do just rock about until you tighten that plastic screw up in the top. That, that's just how they are. It is... Um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a strange uh, strange design. It says, but when I converted the phone, however, I came across an unusual wiring configuration with a mysterious extra blue wire from the ringer to T eighteen in the phone to T eighteen. Right. Shall we shall we have a little look at that, what that? possibly was right from the ringer to t18 you say there um right is it something like this now i know this dominic this says it's for a 706 and a 746 and an 8746 when it's been converted and whatnot but it is it is basically the same for a trim phone okay now um right um explaining this to you right uh, i'm just trying to think of how best to explain it right um okay um yeah right as you can see there t19 18 17 and 16 are all all tied together and the white side of the line cord the white side of of the line goes to it the, the the only incoming things that you have to worry about really um, when you, uh, from from a telephone line are two wires the A leg and the B leg um, it doesn't really matter which way around you have them um, but generally in the UK uh, when they get to your phone one of them is red and one of them is white okay when they, when they get into your phone um, and one goes um, to T8 um which in turn connects to the orange wire going to the dial and the other goes to 16 17 18 19 which should all be joined together for a for a converted phone now that blue wire that extra blue wire that you've got going to t18 is that what is actually purple on this picture of mine so is that what is actually on 16 on mine going to the bell set because from that block, 16, 17, 18 and 19, one wire should indeed go to the bell set. Okay, and then the other wire should go to T4 from the, from the bell set. Um, so is that how it is, Dominic? Is that, is that what it is? Although the purple on mine, the, those wires that go to the bell set, what confuses people is they can be any colour at all. It just that they're not colour coded because they're regarded as internal wiring. So it's whatever colour bit of wire they happen to have. Um, and sometimes they're even stripy. <laughs> um, so I think maybe what you're seeing on T18 as an extra blue wire is what should be there on T16 as a purple wire but because T16, 17, 18 and 19 are all joined together it doesn't really matter which terminal you put them on it's just good practice to do it the way it is in this picture here um, because um, you know that's the way to do it for clarity and to basically try and keep just one no, one wire on each uh, terminal where where possible uh, so your red and your white are your are your line your blue is what powers your ringer because if you look at the blue coming in from the bt uh, plug socket thing the blue line cord 
it then it then jumps through a jumper um, it comes in onto T6 jumps through a jumper to T5 and then T5 jumps to T4 through a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor and then from T4 that goes to the bell set as well you see um, so that's a big loop from the bell set from the blue wire um, and T6 into T5 through the resistor into T4 up into the bell set through the bell set through both bell coils in turn or in a trim phone through the ringer in turn um, and then down onto T16 jump to 15 jump to 14 and then it goes back no 16 jump to 17 jump to 18 and then on 18 it jumps back um, through the uh, through the line so that completes the circuit sort of thing um, right what have we got uh, right don't it says you don't think it is as there are three wires running from the ringer board it would also cause the ringer speaker to buzz loudly on connecting to a core 50% of the time. Hmm. Parking this wire onto one of the spur terminals sorted the problem though and it works perfectly now. So I don't know what that extra wire was then. <laughs> probably something that shouldn't have been there um, and you just parked it onto a spare terminal um, so yeah uh, reckon it may have been an early revision of the board as all the boards are marked 68-1 and several components are in different places compared to other trim phone boards I've seen right which trim phone is it because there's two models now I can't remember the model numbers just off the top of my head but there's two distinct types of trim phones there's the ones that were around in the sort of mid 60s and then there's the later ones and most trim phones you see are the later ones um, right um, Christopher says he's fixing the dial on his N19703B phone uh, not knocking out the handset when I dial because I get a loud pulse in handset yeah that's quite common Chris yeah yeah it's just a contact not closing or a contact that's dirty somewhere but that's a common problem um, and you will get a very loud bang in your ear as it uh, as it pulses right I said you want to see this today because the phone that you've got there Right, is it, is it, is it, I can pick it up, right, is it one of these that you've got there, or something similar to that, and don't it says, this uh, one says TCH7221668, think if I can send uh, some photos of it. Yeah Dominic send me a photo of the, of the trim phone. The way to do it if you've not got my email address already is to go on the website andyshed.callpress.net send me a message and then I'll message you back and when I message you back you'll then have the email address. I can't say the email address on YouTube or put it up on YouTube otherwise I get gazillion gazillions gazillions of tons of spam. Um, right um, that is that what you've got Chris or something like that just got to just got to wait for it to get to Australia uh, the, the signal uh, no yours looks like a 706 ow now you said last week it didn't look like a 706 didn't you or have, have we have we got that the wrong way round have I got that the wrong way round Yours looks like a 706. So what is it? It's a 19703. We we had this out last week, didn't we? Of course. I I said last week that an N19703B should look like that. 
and you said no it looks like a 706 and I said well that's an N1900 then so your N9 but it's not an N19703B is it because there's another number under the bottom what's the number on the base of it Chris not on the not on the circuit board on the base because I think you're confusing a number for a part, a Nokia part, I mean an Ericsson part number, with an Ericsson phone. Um, because all Ericsson part numbers begin with an N. And they recycle some of the numbers. So there's an Ericsson N1900 phone, but there's also Ericsson N19 something 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 part numbers for like boards and things inside phones so it gets a little bit complicated but nonetheless i shall i shall carry on i i'll uh, i'll show everybody this being as, as i've got it here um this is um an old ericsson baker light phone this is one of the ones that i was talking about last week that came in a batch that it was in a garden basically buried under an under a moldy old tarpaulin in somebody's garden um, um, so uh, Chris says and the base says N1970 B 36T so it is an N1970 B hmm Yeah, right. I'll take your word for that one, Chris. It sounds, uh, it sounds a bit strange, that one. That phone. Um, all right. This is what I thought Chris had got, but apparently not. Um, this is an Ericsson. These came out in the sort of 1950s. Um, and if you look underneath it very, very carefully, just up here... You can just make out it says L M Ericsson um, somewhere just up here. Um, but then down here, there's writing that is obviously um, foreign, and that's because we think these were made in India. I think these were an Indian version, um, and. This phone has got just about everything wrong with it you can imagine. Remember that I remember that I said that these came from under a mouldy tarpaulin in a back garden. So just look at the state of it. <laughs> right, there's the dial and just twisted bits of wire on the ends. No, no spade connectors or anything on the ends of this. This is this is. This is Indian engineering for you here. Um, and then we can take the body off. And like I say, I've got a lot of these, and they're nearly all sort of chipped away around the bottom, like that. You know, the Bakelite is chipped away around the bottom of nearly all of them. Um, so I need to repair that. He sent a picture of his phone in the email. If you sent a picture of that one, Chris, that phone... That we were talking about last week you sent a photo of that in the email i don't think that email's got here because i've not seen a picture of that one so i might have to check my spam filter after this show because you might you might have got tangled up in my spam filter um so going back to this is the the basic circuitry of it and it is very basic um, as you can see very basic uh, believe it or not I cleaned this before we <laughs> before we started tonight um, and by cleaning it I mean I, I mean I ran a soft paintbrush over it to get the dust off it um, but that is basically all it is it's a really simple thing indian telephones are nearly always built on the base plate 
if you get something that looks like a uh, 300 series phone from the UK, um, there are Indian versions of those that were made later generally and you can tell the Indian ones because they're built on the base plate like this they're not a chassis up inside the phone they're not a separate chassis on the inside of the phone so you take the base plate off and then you drop the chassis out that's how British one is but the Indian version it's all actually built on the base plate like this um, so as you can see it's a fairly uh, a fairly simple thing this so what we're going to do is tonight we're going to try and put one together because 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 this is even on the floor again I've got a chassis of another one yeah um, and this is another one that's good like that and then I've got another one here now this one is not so good this one's got a problem uh, if I put it on top of there like that and change the camera view again you'll see that one of these connections here has broken off this coil here um, so that would probably be nigh on impossible to repair but what is good about this is it's still got the remnants of a line cord on it you see it's still got the remnants of a line cord and it's still got its handset connected so although that is no good in this one we can use this base to determine where things should be connected on the others so this is the one we're going to use as um, a coat of looking at um, so we're going to sort of stick this one down there somewhere and then we're going to have a little look at these and decide where we should put um, various things and the various things that we need to start looking at will be refitted in just a moment um, right I now need to find um, another handset So here's another handset, and this one has got a three core cable, three core wire, and I believe the original has got a three core wire. Yeah, it's got a blue, a white, and a red, and this one has got get in the right place for the camera a blue a white and a red the camera moves it keeps going places it shouldn't be right a blue white and a red on that okay so let's see if we can wire this up to what should be a good um, phone on here so we're having a little look now at the wiring. I'm seeing one of these bells is the opposite way around as well. Uh, or at least the bell coil has been put in the opposite way around. See this one, the connections to the bell coil are at the back here. But on this one, the connections to the bell coil are at the front. So that bell coil has been assembled differently. I don't think it matters particularly, but it's there. It is a thing. Right, so looking at my other one, um, the white that comes out of the handset 
goes there onto that terminal. White out of the handset goes there. So what we're going to do is loosen these things here so I can push this whole lot hopefully up through there like that and the red one as well um, oh Paul Nolan's here hi Paul he says was the handset on those Ericsson phones similar to the GPO version with the spittoon yes it is I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute um, there's some of the ITI copies were made in strange colors such as peach light green and powder blue yeah, that, yeah, that, that's the ITI copies of the 300 series, isn't it? Yeah, they've done a lot of colours. A lot of colours over there in India. Um, and I'm not sure if they're made out of different materials as well. Um, they certainly can't be those colours in Bakelite because you can't do um, bright colours in Bakelite. It just doesn't happen. Um, you could, it, it can't be done. Um, the original 300 series phones, the red ones and the green ones and the ivory ones, were not Bakelite. Um, the the red ones and the green ones, I believe, were Diacon, believe it or not. That far back they were Diacon. Um, and the ivory ones were something else. And the ivory ones go funny with, with, with age, you know, you know the what whatever they were made out of degrades with age all right I'm tightening that up now because that is kind of your strain relief to hold that in there and i said that white wire goes up onto there didn't i so there it's going to go now of course ideally we would have been in and and cleaned all these up and whatnot but I'm just hoping that we're just going to be able to prove it works kind of thing before we have to start cleaning it all up because remember these phones have been outside under a tarpaulin in the garden um, right, so that's white on there blue goes next to it and red goes the next one down so, blue then, fits on next to it, and red fits to the next one down, the red is furthest away. And guess what? The red wire is also the shortest. How stupid is that? Um, but hopefully it'll just get there if I maybe manipulate this a bit. So we have a bit more of the actual set wire through here more of the curly cord through there that up because that's got to tap into the base as well 
So it's got to be there. It's quite tricky to line up. They didn't use an extra nut or a bolt or anything on these. If they could possibly get away with it, they would. So that will just about go on there now. So that is the handset um, wired back up. Now the question is, where do the dial bits and pieces go? Uh, and I'm just looking as well to make sure all the contacts at the back of the phone are are on because at the back I'll show you on this one um, at the back of there you see this that's the switch hook and there's a lot of things there that are all soldered on I'm just making sure none of them have gone brittle and dropped off um, and they look okay I, what I'm going to do um, have I got any of my magic stuff in here um, I haven't got any of that magic contact cleaner. Right, I'm just going to go and get. Um, I'm just going to go and get some of my magic contact cleaner. Um, Paul says, "Is your main desk phone an N nine one hundred and Andy or N one nine hundred or whatever they are?" Um, no, it's not. It's not an Ericsson one. You mean this? Um, that. That thing there. Um, no, it's not an it's not an Ericsson. I there's nothing marked on it. Um, underneath, if we have a little look underneath it, there's no markings on it. But I think it's a GEC. I think we've said before it's a GEC. Um, I think we worked it out uh, from some of the components inside it. It was a GEC, um, but it's a it's a it's a typical um, it's a typical what I call a 706 clone, um, but it has got the nice dial 12 in it rather than the dial 21. Um, right, I am going to get some of the contact cleaner stuff. Try and see if we can clean these things up a bit. Just bear with me a second. Right, I'm back on the squeaky floor, um, and I've got this uh, this contact cleanery stuff. It's Aquanol multi-purpose spray. It says protects and cleans electrical contacts, drives out damp, lubricates, penetrates, stops rust. Basically, it does everything. You can get this from the pound shop. Can't remember if it's Poundland or Pound World. But you can get this from the pound shop, and it's good. Um, it is good. Um, so I'm going to spray a bit on here. You see, and things immediately look cleaner the moment you spray it on. So you spray it on, it actually smells quite nice as well. Um, and then I've just got an old toothbrush here. Um, To start cleaning things up a bit, and you see, they, they, things immediately look a lot cleaner, don't they? Um, if I go and get a bit of kitchen towel now, Dump it all 
the kitchen towel it's, it's marvellous that the difference that stuff makes it really is um, We'll spray it on a few other things. Let's try the bell gongs and see if we can. See, it actually just moves the dirt. Can you see it moving the dirt? These bell gongs, I think, were originally sort of uh, chrome plated or something, but the plating on them is going a bit funny. Going a bit pitter than that. That looks a bit. That looks a bit cleaner, doesn't it? Move the camera out this way a bit. So that there, that's a that's a little bit cleaner. Um, so we've got these contacts on. The, the these for these first three here, um, and that's that. So where does the line cord go? Well, the two main legs of the line cord. Looking at the other one that I've got on the on the floor, the side of me. I go to the two on the bottom. Um, they go to this one and this one. It looks like a white one goes to the second one, and it's got a grey one in it. That line cord has, goes to that one. So I'm going to say red there and white there. I'm going to say red and white there for line cords and everyone except this phone has also got a jumper uh, between the next two down so I'm going to steal the jumper out of this out of this um, knackered one that I've got down here Get it out. There, got it. That's a little jumper thing. So I can now put that in here and it goes. Between those two there. Now I'm just wondering if I've got on my computer here anywhere a bit of uh, a bit of information um, as to where um, as to where the uh, things on the dial go I have that's cool so right if
and show you that. Like that. Right, so. There's the little thing that I'm looking at to show me where things go. So, I've got me... Right, you're looking at that with the bells at the top. Um, but of course, when you look at it here, you've got the bells at the bottom. So, we've got to kind of turn it around. I'll turn it around, what I'm doing. I'll spin it the other way around for you. So, it's the same sort of thing. But it's not the same. It will be in a minute. Right, there we go. Alright, so that's that, you see. Right? So, uh, your line core comes into the bottom uh, left, too, as you're looking at it there. Um, so, line core is here and here. Okay, right, there for the to the line core. And the next one up this way and one of the line cord legs has got a bridge and you can see that bridge marked on there all right and then on the upper level here on the outside here's the outside of the phone going from furthest away from the gongs you've got white blue red um, for your handset so white blue red for your handset so that's right um, then, so then we've got to put in the dial and the dial has got a white um, which is marked sort of grey on here just so we can see it on the white background so it's got a white, a red, a blue and a yellow it should have so let's see if the dial has indeed got a white, a red, a blue and a yellow shall we um right so here's the dial and it has indeed got a white a red a blue and a yellow okay so that's looking rather good now the problem with these phones is the dials fit from the outside if you look at this case you see there's a thing there that has a screw through from the back that then screws into the back of the dial there there should be one on this side as well but it's broken off and that's common that's a common problem so your dial goes in from the front yeah uh -huh. so what you've got to do is put that in place in there and then you've got to wire the dial into the phone once the dial is sat in there so that bit ain't easy <laughs> um, so that's got to go in there so well I have a look at that so if I put that Put that one over to one side a minute, put that there a minute, like that, and then we'll have a little look at this. Um, um, right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a bit behind on the chat because I'm doing things here. Um, Dominic says, uh, I got two, um, two tone green Mark 1 Sonar 46Fs which had the matching lighter dial bezel oh hang on a minute um right you've got two totally mark one 746 f's which had the matching light dial bezel and after much deliberation in the end i switched it out for a dark green one as i think they look a little plain otherwise i agree with you dominic they do um I thought that lighter green bezel was a later thing, so I'm wondering if that got put on later. 
I don't think they originally had a light green one. Uh, similarly, the, the grey ones didn't originally have a light grey bezel. I think they had a dark grey bezel originally. I think it was done later. Um, so I think what you've probably done is you've inadvertently restored it to original there. Depending on how old they are, of course. Um, but if it's a 746F for figure... Um, as opposed to an L for letter, um, then it could be a very late one. Um, how are we doing for time? We're up to 46 minutes so far. Um, uh, <coughs> Christopher says, uh, do you have to have the 3.3 resistor in an 1970B36 T phone when you live next door to the telephone exchange? Right. going to be different in Australia this um, the problem is it's a, the, the resistor is all to do with what they call red numbers and it's all to do with the amount of power that the um, that the phone draws the phone ringers draw that the ringing coils draw what you're doing is you are putting the resistor in so the ringing coils cannot draw as much power out of the system because a 706 let's say which is basically what your phone is based on um, has a ren of 4 which means if there was another phone on your extension on, on your house system um, that would ring together with it so if you've got like, let's say you've got three phones on different extensions around the house and they all ring when you get a call coming in. Because that 706 clone, as we'll call it, draws so much power because it's got a Ren of 4, because it draws so much power into its bell coils, the other two phones might not ring. Okay? So, what you're putting the resistor in for is to limit the amount of power it can get. Um, it's a bit like putting a muzzle on a greedy dog when it's eating so it can't eat so quick so the other dogs can eat some of the food out of the bowl. Um, so, when you put that resistor in, you are limiting the power that those bells can get, that those coils can get. Um, and so the other phones will be allowed to ring. But I would say you don't need the resistor if you've only got one phone on your system or one phone on your extension. If you're going through something like a, like a PABX system and you've only got one phone that rings at a time or one phone on an extension of the PABX, then you don't need the resistor. It's only if you've got multiple phones on it. Um... And also, the British way of converting it also takes out the capacitor that's in the phone because in Britain the capacitor is in the wall jack these days. Um, but if you're not doing the thing with the capacitor, if you're still using the capacitor in the phone because you've not got the capacitor in your wall jack, and I don't know how it works in Australia, that, um, but then you just put the resistor in series with your bell coils and that and that will uh, take the ren down now the thing is then because those bell coils are not getting as much power they will ring slightly um, softer because there's not as much power to move that clapper backwards and forwards because it's kind of being restricted the power it's getting um, so it might ring a little bit softer so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a balancing act but try it without the resistor and if everything on your system works without the resistor if everything else still rings you don't need the resistor if other things don't ring then you do need the resistor okay um, Arthur G says, um, same with the brown bezels that we were talking about um, uh, on, on the grey phones. Well, they're actually grey bezels on the grey phones, but it's just that they turn brown because they do funny things. The ABS plastic does funny things with light over time. Um, 
The alphanumeric bezels, Arthur says, on the 706s had those bezels colours. So they were kind of uh, returned to the range on the 746s at the beginning of the 80s. Um, right, I'm not entirely sure I understood that. Let me read that again. The alphanumeric bezels on the 706s had those bezel colours. Um, so those were returned to the range on the 746s at the beginning of the 80s. So are you saying the lighter coloured bezels came first and then well, they went back to the darker ones? Is that what you're saying? Because it was the darker coloured bezels, the dark green ones and the dark uh, grey ones that had the alphanumerics on, on both 706s and very early 746s. If you see a light coloured bezel with letters or numbers on that's a thing that never existed that's been made recently um, what model um arthur says dominic what model and bezel do you have on yours good question good question um yeah i don't know i personally like the dark colored bezels with the alphanumerics on but i i personally like those I'm more likely to buy a phone if it's got those. Right, so we're doing this bit of wiring up here still, aren't we? Um, um, so I'm just going to wire the uh, the dial into this uh, this phone now. Um, where are we? Desk there. So I, I have to switch the cameras myself as well, so it gets a little bit complicated, shall we say. So, what are we wiring where? So then, to the to the outside nearest the bells, we have the white wire. Right. So the white one here, this one. Right. Outside of the phone nearest the bell. So this one here. So this one is white. Yep. Yeah. This one. Yep. Yeah. And what I do is I make a little hooky shaped thing on the end and just hook it round like that. You have to hook it round the right way so that when you tighten it up it doesn't undo itself but you soon work out which way it is. And that's the white on there. Right, so then uh, next to the white um, inboard of it um, is red according to that. So inboard of the white we have the red one so that's this one uh, so many says his phone is a 73 746F I believe it's quite late for a Mark 1 case yes I agree it is um, which, in, uh, which is another interesting thing. It came with a matching light bezel originally. So it had a Mark 1 case and a matching light bezel. The question is though, Dominic, how do you know it was that's original? Because so many things have got swapped around over the years. Unless that phone's been in your possession since 1973, how do you know for certain it's original because this is the problem that i have that i just don't know you you can open something up like i've opened this phone up tonight and it, and it looks like nobody's touched it for years but that doesn't mean that is actually the case um um so um You know how how do you how how do you know for sure? That, that's that's my question. That's what I'm getting at. How how can how do you know um, that something's not been messed with over the years? Because I never know for certain on pretty much any of my phones because things are so easy to change particularly with the cases and the dial bezels on 700 series. Right, so. 
that's me blue on there because that's inboard down from the top and then next to the blue goes the yellow which is the only one I've got left Arthur G says a 1973 746 should have the light green bezel and generally should be a Mark 1 case the dark green bezel on a 746 came out around 1980. Ah, but there were dark green bezels in uh, in the 60s or early 70s because they were alphanumeric ones. Um, when they thought they still needed alphanumeric bezels on them. Um, and I know this because I've got one. I've got a green one, I've got a red one, and I think I've got a black one as well. So, and they, and they are definitely on the dark green, um, on the dark green um, bezels, on dark, dark green background rather. Um, Dominic says, my question about how do you know it's original? He says, that's a good question. Although he thinks it was because it was an unconverted phone and the case was slightly yellowed, um, which covered both the case and bezel. Um, um, so, yeah, I just want to clear this up about these 746 bezels um, for anybody that's listening to this or, or is watching this on a smart TV and can't see the chat or anything. Um um, I think it's been put forward that light green bezels came before dark green bezels and light grey bezels came before dark grey bezels but the bezels were dark originally because they had alphanumerics on even on 746 on the very first few 746s for about the first four years from 1967 to about 1971 ish roughly um, those 746s, um, some of them came out of the factory with the alphanumeric bezels like the 706s had. Now, they were always on the dark grey or dark green. Um, then at some point, they started doing light grey and light green plain bezels and also dark grey and dark green plain bezels. So, what's, what people are saying here is they went from the dark green lettered ones to potentially to light green and light grey unlettered ones and then back to the dark ones again is that is that right have I have I have I got that right Christopher 2000 says did the GPO uh, make 200 series wall phones I have 200 series phone with a wall bracket That's a good question, Christopher. I don't know. Um, hopefully somebody else will chime in on the chat on that one. But I don't know. I've got a feeling there was something available to mount an ordinary desk phone on the wall. I've got a feeling there was a there was a bracket for a 200 series to do that. Um, but I can't say that I've ever seen one. I've just read something somewhere that's ringing a vague bell in my mind. Um, right. I have now, I believe got this phone wired up it would only need theoretically a line cord and we could try it the only problem is I haven't got one to hand so the line cord will have to wait until probably next week and we'll be able to give this phone a try then but there it is it's basically all wired up there now um, it's still filthy although it is a bit cleaner where I've sprayed some of this contact cleaner in it um, I'm not terribly sure you should spray it on the coils though um, but I will 
spray it on other things, try and clean other bits of it up. And also, something I have found about this contact cleaner is stuff. I've discovered that it also for instance this contact this contact cleaner that I got out of the pound shop it will clean up Bakelite um, watch and be amazed notice there's a switch hook missing off this as well. You see the difference it makes is quite something. And it does stay reasonably, it does dry a bit and go a little bit duller, but it stays reasonably clean. two-pronged thing to get in the middle of that and screw that off but for now right we're back to the thing about the bezels again uh, Arthur G says all green 706 L's the alpha with well, the alphanumeric bezels had dark green uh, and, and uh, brown or grey bezels on them. During the 70s they should be the same shade as the case until 1980. So the bezels on these 746s, the ones that had the alphanumerics on, the ver i.e. the very early ones from the late 60s to very early 70s, um, they uh, had dark green bezels. But then, when they switched to plain bezels, the bezels should be the same colour as the case, i.e. light green or light grey, until 1980, when they switched back to the dark bezels again. Um, thanks for explaining that one, Arthur. Um, I, I, I thought that was what you were getting at, but I got a bit confused with it. With um, Um, the, uh, and Dominic says the dark green bezel that he sourced from a refurbished 706 uh, must have been refurbished quite late on Arthur G says was it an all plastic bezel or metal clamp with it um, yeah the ones that have got the that are all plastic if you see an all plastic bezel that's not got a metal clamp that has got the alphanumerics on it stay away from it because that's a reproduction one definitely the 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 genuine alphanumeric ones always have the metal clamps on the back they're always flat with the metal clamps on the back and they're actually not 
a green bezel or a grey bezel or whatever they are actually clear and then painted the relevant colour on the back the numbers are printed on the back and then painted over so everything is on the back of a, the clear bezel so that when you touch it you can't rub it off um, because you're touching the other side of the plastic to where all the markings actually are um, uh, Paul Nolan says, do I have a favourite model of GPO telephone? Hmm, that's tricky. <laughs> um, that's tricky. I think the 706, well, I'm going to say something really, really, really um, um, sort of controversial here. Um, yes, I do. Um but it's not any of the ones that you will have seen on this channel at least not for a very long time there was in the 80s there was a thing that came out called an ambassador uh, phone a lot of them were push buttons but there was a dial version of it that was available in yellow i think it was probably only available in yellow it was bright sunshine canary yellow um and I've only ever seen yellow ones. I don't know if it was available in any other colours. But it was a dial version of the Ambassador. And it is such a well-built, strong piece of kit. It's really, really, really good. And uh, I think that's probably my, my favourite. You see one on eBay once in a blue moon. Um, and nobody quite knows what they are. Um, but yeah, the dial version of the Ambassador, it's a really, really good phone. I got it, and mine wasn't working when I got it, because there were a lot of little wires off it on the inside. There was a big circuit board on the inside of it. Um, but I did manage to get it going. Um, I will have to search it out and uh, put it on an episode, because it's quite unusual, a, a dial Ambassador. Um, that's uh, it's uh, a, a very unusual phone that is um, uh, Paul says so seen the yellow ambassador phone uh, it had bells inside um, yeah it did did you see that on here Paul was it was that on an episode on here like ages ago uh, or have you seen one elsewhere but yeah it has it's got it's got a proper a proper bell inside it yeah I think it was the last thing they designed when they th when they thought that they were going to be um, renting out phones still. Um, so they designed it not to break, so the engineers didn't have to go out. <laughs> and that, you know, they, they 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 designed the thing not to break. So um, I think that's uh, that was the idea with the with the ambassador. But the, the plastic on it's just really strong and it's really good. Um, uh, Donald Meekin said he's heard that the Statesman phone supplied to British Rail for signalling centres had bells fitted, strangely. Um, I don't know about that one, uh, Dominic. I know British Rail had a lot of Statesmans. They were generally a sort of chocolate brown colour and did have the BR logo on them. Um, but I've never investigated inside one. I, I've not got one. Um, and I've never had a look inside one. Uh, Arthur G says I have loads of these alphanumeric bell, Arthur, alphanumeric bell with clamps, but some need touching up with paint. Anybody, any idea what paint they used, or what paint could be used? Um, yeah, the, right, Arthur. These alphanumeric bezels. Um, the paint they used was. Um, actually a matte paint because of course when it's on the other side of the plastic and the plastic is shiny it, look, it looks glossy but if you actually take one off and look on the back the paint is matte um, and I'm guessing they probably used matte paint because it was quick drying um, I would suggest um, Humbrol enamel that you get from model shops and things but get the matte ones um, uh, and try and mix a colour to match from that. Uh, 
Vakorix or Vanashorix or however you pronounce it, it says hello. Hello there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm still polishing my phone here. Uh, that, but you can you can see how that has actually cleaned it up quite well with very little effort. <laughs> um, it, it does it does work quite well on Bakelite. Um, and again, that's this stuff from the pound shop. This Quonol multi-purpose spray. You don't have to worry too much about Bakelite. You don't have to worry too much about things eating Bakelite. But it's a fairly stable thing, Bakelite. There's not much that will melt or or, or damage Bakelite. It's a, it's almost like glass. It's a, it's it's a really stable thing. That's one of the reasons why it's very difficult to. Um, very difficult to try and um, mend it because you can't like melt it and like weld to it. Um, right, it's alright, I'm just catching up on the chat again. Um, right, we are up to folks, we are actually up to an hour and 12 minutes. It must be. It must be some sort of record for us for a, for a live stream without it going wrong. This, um, so I think for today we are going to uh, leave it somewhere here. I will just put the handset up on this phone, and you'll see the manky old handset on the nice clean phone now. <laughs> um, so we will fit a line cord to that, and uh, hopefully next week. We'll have that phone working. Well, the, the dial on it works. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, so we, we've we've kind of put all that together um, out, of, out of some of the bits that I got from underneath that manky tarpaulin in that garden. Um, We'll uh, put all the screws back in and that over the uh, over the week, and uh, we'll fit a line cord. Um, and then we will uh, we'll see how it's going from there. Um, Christopher 2000 said, "Did BT refurbish GPO 312s with 746 type dials uh, in 1980? Don't think they did it as late as 1980. They were certainly still doing it in the early 1970s. And yes, they did put dial 21s into some of them." Um, what they did because originally they had um, stainless steel finger wheels um, but when they put dial 21s in rather than dial 12s uh, 